Tonight is going to be the first of two homilies on the human person, specifically the human person as male and female. And while this topic is timely in the sense of the gender dysphoria, transgenderism, transhumanism, and the general confusion about elementary human biology and so many other things in our culture that we're suffering from, I won't be approaching the human person from a cultural perspective. My purpose, rather, is going to be to explore the extraordinary gift and glorious mystery of the human person as God made us, a unity of body and soul yet distinct as male and female. My purpose is to approach the human person with a profound attitude of thankfulness, awe, and gift as we consider how God and his divine wisdom and love made us the way we are. To do this, let's start at the beginning, literally in the beginning from the book of Genesis, for that is where we find stated very succinctly and yet sublimely how God created us. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we read, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. More on who this us is and what is meant by be being created in God's image and likeness later. But continuing on to verse 27, God now acts on his intention and does indeed create man in his image and likeness. And furthermore, male and female, he created them. Natural law, which comes to us from God himself through his eternal law and is placed into the heart of every human being, testifies to this. Our five senses, our reason and common sense, too, all testify to the reality and truth that mankind, male and female, are fearfully and wonderfully made. It is these two verses that provide the sure and certain biblical foundation, that is, the foundation in divine law, for our understanding of who we are created in his image and likeness, male and female. St. John Paul the Great powerfully affirms this in the opening words of his magnificent 1993 encyclical, Veritatis Splendor, where we read, where we read quote, the splendor of truth shines forth in all the works of the creator and in a special way in man created in the image and likeness of God. Truth enlightens man's intelligence and shapes his freedom, leading him to know and love the Lord." Unquote. Therefore, everything that is true, beautiful, and good about the human person, and anything whatsoever we may subsequently discover about ourselves, must flow from this foundation and ultimately return to it. If it is to be in accord with the eternal, divine, and natural will of God, in order for it to be an authentic understanding of the human person in the eyes of God. For our very dignity and purpose flows from this. We have dignity because in all of creation, mankind alone was created for his own sake in God's image and likeness. We have traces of the divine in our soul. We are rational, that is to say, creatures with reason and free will. We're capable of introspection about who we are and the meaning of our existence. We're even aware that we're aware and can contemplate this as well. And because of all this, in our very spirit and body united within our rational soul, we have been gifted with the unique capacity to both know and love 
our creator. And in this, my brothers and sisters, we have arrived at the very reason for our existence, to know God and to love him, and to serve him in this life and be with him forever in the next, just like the Baltimore Catechism has always said. And with this, with our image and likeness in mind, we can now return to Genesis 1.26 where God said, let us make man. This verse is the first verse in the Bible that alludes to God as a trinity, as a community of divine persons. The most holy trinity is one God yet three distinct persons, one yet not solitary. And mankind reflects this as well. We form a single worldwide community of persons, yet we're distinct individuals, one and equal in our dignity as human beings, yet distinct in the way we express the image and likeness of God as male and female. And as male and female, we were made for each other. As spouses, Adam and Eve were incomplete without the other. This is why when Eve was presented to Adam, he cried out in joy, at last, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Now he was complete. But we too, all of us here, and all mankind are incomplete as a community of persons without each other, male and female. The sexes complement and complete each other, and in this constitute a reflection of the Most Holy Trinity. Now, as male and female, the human person is indeed a reflection of God, but this reflection neither defines nor limits God, for we're a finite image and reflection, or image and likeness, rather, of an infinite being. We are either male or female. God is neither. Nevertheless, as St. Paul the Great stated beautifully in his exposition on the theology of the body, the human body makes the invisible reality of God's nature manifest and visible. Not only is male and female but also in the union of male and female as spouses, as well as the union as a community of persons. St. John Paul the Great wrote, quote, the body, in fact, only the body, is capable of making visible what is invisible, the spiritual and the divine. It has been created to transfer into the visible reality of the world the mystery hidden from eternity in God and thus to be a sign of it. He continues, We can deduce that man became the image of God not only through his own humanity but also through the communion of persons which man and woman form from the very beginning. The function of the image is that of mirroring the one who is the model, of reproducing its own prototype. Man becomes an image of God not so much in the moment of solitude, that is, when Adam was alone before Eve, as in the moment of communion. This constitutes perhaps the deepest theological aspect of everything one can say about man. On all this, right from the beginning, the blessing of fruitfulness descended." Now, next time I'll be covering specific characteristics of what St. John Paul the Great would call the masculine and feminine genius. But until then, I'll leave you with this. Whether we are a man or a woman, the truth is each one of us we'll find our ultimate fulfillment only in the complete gift of ourselves. Our respective masculine or feminine genius is the principal way or mode in which we do that. 
God made us this way on purpose. We complement and complete each other. And as King David affirms in Psalm 139, we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. Thanks be to God.